All right, welcome back to another pre-modern video. This time we are playing the deck that is going to put the color black back on the map in pre-modern. I'm talking about mono black, nether spirit, contamination. Uh, this deck is super cool. Uh, the core of it is of course, uh, locking your opponent out with uh, contamination plus nether spirit. You uh, assemble this combo by just drawing the cards. All you do is just draw the cards. Um, one of the core concepts of this deck is sort of like having these disruptive elements that you can then cash in for half of a zombie infestation uh, pitch or um, like a flat or pitch it into uh, sickening dreams or pitch it into contagion or unmask. So uh, half the time you're drawing duress cabal therapy in your opening hand, you're getting them early, taking out their key cards, cruising to a win after that. But if you top deck it late, that's not a problem. We can pitch the contagion, we can pitch the unmask. Um, so yeah, same thing, redundant infestation, not good. A redundant contamination, not good. We're just pitching all that. We're just pitching out all that. And then we're just gassing back up with uh, skeletal scrying. Um, so this deck was primarily designed by Alvaro and Lindo. Uh, you can hear all about it on both the uh, All Things Considered podcast and the I've Got Question podcast. Um, this exact list is the list that McLean Denny is using in the Pre-Modern Showdown series, which you can catch on Wednesdays at uh, 7 p.m. on twitch.tv slash Ranger. Um, you know, we have uh, lots of kind of cool stuff going on. They kind of describe it as like this mid-range deck. This feels to me like a sort of weird, like, it feels like a mid-range deck in, in that you're probably going to end up with like zero cards in hand very often and just like win on a super small margin. But um, there's just like so little card advantage here. It's all virtual card advantage. Um, there are, of course, ways to break out of the contamination lock. One of them just being having your own mistress factory. Um, so we have port and wasteland to deal with that. Um, we also... Um, have no rod in the sideboard to deal with mox diamond um and uh also tormod's crypt or phyrexian furnace um we have a little coffin purge action to deal with our opposing uh contamination mirror match you know it's gonna be big on these streets so we gotta have some coffin purge dystopia is uh, pretty mandatory for uh, dealing with green and white permanents it's really the only efficient or effective way to do that um parish is uh, good for a little bit of wrathing action, uh, pretty good against the rock, pretty good, uh, decent against Harrogate. I mean, it'll get a couple of elephant tokens, so it's not the end of the world. Um, uh, you know, snuff out's a good card. These are all kind of good cards. Engineered Plague's a good card. We have an Engineered Plague main. So that's like the mid-range aspect. We've got some good cards that are like, you know, probably 6.5s out of 10. And then you just like bring it all together. And the sum of your parts is, uh, you know, 5.8 out of 10. Um, but, you know, this deck uh, uh, follows some of the rules that I, I you know, tend to like of just kind of like being synergistic, but not like too synergistic. It's not over. I mean, it doesn't look like it's overly reliant on any one thing. Um, it's got a few avenues to um, disrupt your opponent. So um, it's definitely got some good stuff going for it. Um, you know, wanted to point out how nifty it is that it plays um, all these differently named lands. So that tainted pack becomes a lot better. You have no more than four of any uh one named land and then of course playing fetches gases up your uh, skeletal scrying so that's kind of nifty but um you know they're saying that this deck beats a lot of the tier decks um you know i uh, i wanted to see if that's true because um you know it's just a deck that i haven't played and um i'd love to get it on my tier list uh which you can find at by calling com and of course you can support my videos by going to ko-fi uh slash spy colony uh links to everything in the description let's jump into some games check 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 all right let's hop into match one of a league time to contaminate some people time to get contaminated okay um hopefully my opponent's deck is weak to duress i am already not having a great time um i don't have any half of the combo um i'm a little flooded and um, I don't know, hopefully my opponent's not playing goblins. Um, I guess Contagion might might get there against goblins, but a turn one, I literally have to Contagion turn one lackey, but my opponent's on a multi-five and I have a double discard hand. And 
Uh, I mean, I could draw. I mean, this is mid-range life, right? It's like The Rock doesn't have better hands than this. It's like we're just going to hope hope to draw Cabal Therapy off the top or just more relevant interaction while we start attacking with uh, Mistress Factories on turn three. Okay. My opponent at least is on a one-lander. Um, but we have somewhat difficult news on the way in the form of Exalted Angel. Uh, Engineered Plague on Humans is going to be quite good against this deck, so I'm not too mad about that. Opponent has found their second land source and is elected to pass the turn with two mana up instead of casting Meddling Mage. So this could either be a super disciplined Meddling Mage situation, but I have a pretty clean duress and detained pack, so I'm going to go for that. And I'll play around miscalculation, why not? This could be an impulse, which would make this duress super embarrassing. Yep, mana leak. Pretty uh, simple. Uh, we'll pass the turn. There's some world in which I want to um, pitch this Tainted Pack to Contagion, but most of the time I'm just going to cast the Tainted Pack and uh, hopefully draw a card. Hopefully. I should have fetched a Snow Covered Swamp, notably. So we'll pack. And then if this gets a counter spell, it's like pretty, pretty good for me. Oh, I forgot to... Um, do I want to put Contagion in my hand? Luckily... Um, I've got only one. Do I want to put Snow Covered Swamp in my hand? Also, no. Okay. Fingers crossed. Do I want to put Wasteland in my hand? I'll take Wasteland. Wasteland's going to be good. <laughs> okay. Tain Pact. Pretty sweet. That was almost impulse. Um, so we're going to Wasteland. That. Let my opponent float one or whatever. Opponent didn't float. Engineer Plague. We don't have any humans in our deck, right? So should be okay. Um, I have to imagine if my opponent wasn't on a multi five, I would be in much more difficult shape, but I am pretty good against like the land still half of their deck. So planes feel like a meddling mage is finally going to come down. No matter though, meddling mage completely dominated by a port here or by a sorry, mistress factory. They're like, please God, no, no second engineered plague. I do not have a second engineered plague. So you are safe for now. I'm going to be hard casting contagions pretty soon, which will get two humans. I almost want to bait the silver knight cast so that I can contagion for two. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that. I'll let my opponent have the uh, potential silver knight. Plow my factory. That's one less plow for another spirit. Okay. We have therapy so we can name exalted angel or we can relax. Yeah, let's go ahead and get Exalted Angel out of their hand. Um, even though they're just like never going to cast it, Silver Knight doesn't matter. I want. I also want an update about what's going on in there. I can trade the Mistress Factory for the other card if it matters. But Exalted Angel is not a human. Oh wow, they just have the same same set. Okay. So I don't really need to flashback naming Meddling Mage, but I will stop them from casting Meddling Mage next turn. Um, they might have, like, I have a Contagion in Exile, so they could they could get the read to um, Mage naming uh, Contagion. And we're just going to be so bored. I'm just so, like... <sighs> Let me draw a Skeletal Scrying. Skeletal scrying one time. Skeletal scrying. They named Cabal Therapy. Makes sense. That's a good. It's a totally reasonable name. And I uh, drew it. So there is that. It's a little sick hard cast um, contagion. We're at 20 life. Our plague is doing work. They can never cast standstill. Unfortunately, this therapy is going to be um, a bit of a miss. Skeletal scrying. Innocent blood. Sure. Doesn't get better than taking down a 1-1. We can double therapy in the future. I'm gonna keep porting their painless white. I think this one damage is gonna matter that they can make white and porting them off double blue just doesn't matter. But yeah, they're on a multi five and we're like, the resource game is still pretty close. Another factory is going to improve our clock though. I guess I could therapy plowshares, but um, that's not necessary. I mean, it's not entirely necessary. I'm like still down for plowshares to get traded in. Disenchant my mistress factory. You got it. Still waiting for skeletal scrying to come off the top of my deck. At least I have this um, factory completely dominated with uh, my port. So don't hate that. 
zombie infestation. Kind of want that to resolve. Um, not really interested in Cabal Therapy to resolve it, though. So I could port them off blue next turn just to stick the infestation. I can also just jam infestation. Uh, I, I actually don't need it to resolve that bad, right? And I'm covered through mana leak. Okay, opponent is f 6 so could just be a land. I'm going to be so excited to convert for one. <laughs> My first zombie <laughs> takes three cards. <laughs> we need another spirit. Oh no, it's a 1-1. One, one. Well, oh no, it's a wasteland. They can wasteland the port. They can wasteland Mish's Factory. That's kind of sad. Okay, well, looks like we're going to make a 2-2. Two -two. Zombie infestation going to uh, get to work. See if they wasteland. I imagine that they do. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to port Mishra's Factory and um, just wait for another spirit to show up. Or, of course, um, I don't know. Uh, Skeletal Scrying? Sure. My cards aren't good anyways. You can have them. I think my deck will be good against the um, the landstill aspect of their deck. But man, they're at 14. This game has just been going... We're on turn 12. They're 14. There we go. Now I have to resolve Skeletal Scrying. That's going to be fun. How do I want to go about this? Hope that they didn't draw a counterspell this turn. Oh, this is so bad, man. I need the Skeletal Scrying to resolve more than anything. And they just like top decked one of their random counter spells. Uh, I wonder what matters. I don't think anything really matters, but um, I don't know. I'm going to exile. I don't have any um, creatures in here. Please resolve. Whew. Nice. We got some We got some stuff to pitch to our zombie infestation. We just made a 2-2 with this. We had three life to make a 2-2. There's a planes. We are dangerously close to um, a hard cast Exalted Angel. Um, I'm gonna hold off Infestation for one turn because I'm not gonna attack, and I'm just gonna just gonna chill. I think that's fine. Oh, Wasteland is great. I'm not gonna fuss about with this Wasteland. Okay, that is a human, my friend. I have a lot of Cabal Therapies to flashback, but instead I'm just going to double port. Um, I could have made a zombie to shorten the clock, but double port is still going to make it really hard for them to function. So we're going to, we're going to get there this game. It's going to take, took, took us a while, but we're going to get there. I wonder if they have black nights or lights of lights of day or anything fancy. Things could get dicey. Ironically, if they have glorious anthem, it'd be, it'd be good. All right. So what do we need? So we kind of like a lot of these cards. Well, the snuff out isn't the sideboard. It's kind of interesting. Okay. Reanimate your exalted angel sounds pretty good. Wall therapy duress, reasonable. I love boarding out tainted pact. I like boarding out unmask. I don't know. Contamination is still a lock, but they do have their own mistress factory, which is kind of annoying but it's still technically a lock. I have to, and I have my like ports and stuff. I have my way to interact with the factory. It's interesting. Do we need Dress Cabal Therapy? Maybe we don't need Dress Cabal Therapy. Oh, my opponent disenchanted the Mistress Factory. They could have disenchanted Engineered Plague, huh? I mean, Engineered Plague isn't that crazy against them, but Mother of Runes is like kind of good. I have to kill the Mother of Runes like immediately. Mother of Runes is like kind of kill on sight. Doesn't matter too much, but it matters a little. I mean, Dystopia is kind of fine. They're going to play multiple white permanents a lot of the times. And it's one of the only ways I can deal with um, Exalted Angel. Maybe Sickening Dreams is kind of bad because I just like. This gets countered and then I'm just like discarding a bunch of cards like sweeping's good. Don't get me wrong. Maybe Zombie Infestations kind of blows. It's like a card I don't like. I don't like a lot of cards in this deck, though. So I have to I have to think more about what the script of this game is going to be. So it's going to be like remove all their threats and then get in with Mistress Factory. Or it's going to be like remove all their threats and reanimate them. Kind of a weird one. Let's say and they have a lot of differently named counter spells. So this turn one Cabal Therapy is just kind of like not very good. 
Um, so we can like blind therapy for mana leak and then stick an invest infestation, which is like not terrible, but and then after reinfestation, we can like pitch something in therapy again. Other cards in the range would be like meddling mage. Oh, uh, we can also just blind therapy for swords to plowshares. It's like totally, totally fine. I think I'm casting this therapy like 1000% of the time. But a mana leak is like the most important thing. I think I underrated um, zombie <laughs> zombie infestation now. Disenchant, seal cleansing. Man, therapy is not good. Not good here. I'm going to be pitching this zombie infestation to, to stuff. <laughs> I mean, obviously I can't, right? Because I have to get through two of these. So I'm just going to yeet out a silver knight. Cool, they're on the board. Yeah, I, I just need to chew through the um, removal here. <laughs> Um, let's go with Mishra's. Let's go with Zombie Infestation. Give them the opportunity to uh, disenchant this. I guess if they ever tap out, that's kind of good for me too. They can play the Seal of Cleansing. Oh, they just straight went for the disenchant. Well, I don't want to pitch any of this, so because I have Skeletal Scrying. So now what I can do is play. Um, like Sickening Dreams, Bring Back Guy, Slashback Cabal Therapy for um, whatever. What was the land they played that turn? They played Mistress Factory. Right. I knew about that. I knew about this too. So there's two unknowns. So therapy. You can just therapy the seal cleansing right now. Sure. So now we are at least close to things that matter. So we're close to the lock, honestly, which is pretty good. Nice opponent is also flooded. Um, yeah, we're not porting, right? Because we were just going to block. Okay, so their top deck was exactly Source of No, Oh, they're just doing the smart thing. Okay, so um, we can port now. Saving three damage instead of two, of course. Please draw land. I don't need these therapies. Zombie infestation. Interesting. I don't really want a scrying too. I want to hit my land drop. I yeah, I really want my scrying to be meatier than this, but I'm like clocked right now. And none of these cards really help me because I can't sickening dreams, mistress factories. Snuff out is not bad. I mean, snuff out is bad, right? Because I don't want to snuff out the silver knight because my mistress factory covers it. So, and with like a dice or whatever. So it just kills an exalted angel eventually. But this turn I can take six, which is like, really bad but i guess i hold off the aggression with just a port and a um and a mistress factory so i'll take six and the next turn I, I won't face any aggression if i draw a land i can play zombie infestation i could even work on the lock i will need that at a later date okay oh i guess i needed it now because like i well well there, there's that no well, and i should have snuffed out one of the um one of the one of the uh factories pretty bad pretty bad spot yeah i should have snuffed out one of the factories last turn knowing that i could get um wastelanded boo opponent with seven cards can be a lot more dangerous than an opponent with five cards oh well, thank god that resolved okay what do we do now we just sickening dreams like the most Oh no, it does damage to each player. So we just play zombie infestation. Oh, Wasteland's not bad. Three cards in hand. I kind of lost track, unfortunately. Let's play Dystopia. Yep. A little one for one Dystopia. Keeps them from playing a white creature next turn. It's honestly super, super solid, solid and fine. Nice. Hopefully not a random stifle for my trouble. We can get there. I can even pay for this Dystopia one time. All right, it doesn't make sense for me to pay for it one time if they don't play a white creature, obviously. Sickening Dreams officially doesn't do anything. I can also like prematurely run out of contamination with zombie infestation on the battlefield. Okay. No thanks. My opponent has to have some... Where's their counter magic is the real question. More lands. It's probably all three lands. Oh, Swords of Plasher is Armageddon, huh? Is it, um, is it just take... Sorts to plowshares. Like if they get in me, that's like bad for them. I'm gonna 
going to go with that idea. I don't know if I want to trade in a swamp for a um, zombie. I kind of wish I drew a land that turn to Skeletal Scrying. I guess I can always get Armageddon with my second Cabal Therapy. I guess I can always get Swords of Plowshares with Cabal Therapy. Interesting. Engineered Plague. Not super relevant right now. Could be relevant in the future. Could be not better than a 2-2. Um, okay, we're going to port them. They're going to float blue so that they can cantrip. They can Teferi's response. Yeah, Teferi has responded. That was a nice top deck, I guess. Wonder how much this engineer plague is going to matter. It really doesn't feel like it matters right now. Another spirit? Not yet. Just get in for two. This deck just takes so much time. It's just like so it's just it's just kills me how slow this deck is. Like I am grinding my opponent out, but like also they're flooded question mark. Like doesn't seem like the most of a thing. I'll take a mistress factory though. I don't know their next creature. Like if they just like have exalted angel, then I lose. <laughs> Don't like that. Are they like waiting till they have counter spell backup for Exalted Angel? Come on, man. Yeah, that's a wasteland. Fetch, Exalted Angel? Boo. Mendling Mage. That doesn't matter. Oh, they can Armageddon now. They're not getting too creative with their uh, their Mendling Mage names here. Port. <laughs> I'm just going to get Teferi's response again. We should probably not attack or should we attack? Let's go with not attack. If they didn't have the meddling mage, I would have made a token at end step and then tried to attack maybe. This contamination is looking really bad. I seem to be like completely incapable of drawing um, nether spirit. Uh, yeah, I really don't want these two cards in my life. Just let the possibility of attacking be a thing or flashing back a ball therapy. Reanimate. It's not a card. I literally can't reanimate anything. Eventually they're going to have Exalted Angel. And then I will be really sad. But right now they don't. So we fight. The bigger question is like if I discard the Contamination or the Snow Covered Swamp to cast Reanimate. At some point I can also just consider Therapy for Armageddon. And I really wish I'd had a second um, spell to get through, like potential counter spell. Silver Knight, pretty pretty fine. Or like, do I Armageddon now? No, they just keep playing lands. Don't know what to make of that. Okay, now I have to hold back all my blockers and I just get completely housed by source splash airs. Contagion's pretty good actually. Hopefully it, it resolves. Life gets really bad if it doesn't resolve, but also like, what am I supposed to do? Oh, play a Swamp maybe? Probably Swamp is good to play Contagion around Mana Leak. Well, now that I've... So now that I'm actually in this spot... Um, Armageddon? Wrath? What is happening? Some sort of weird tech card that kills all black creatures? I wouldn't play Armageddon. I don't know. Maybe they're holding up potential... Factor Fiction? Factor Fiction resolves. Oh, they have Wrath of God. Make it look like, um, make it look like the Sword Splasher is like the best possible card here. You can have a Wrath of God with your Sword Splashers if you want. Yeah, it's fine with me. I gotta play a little faster too. It's pretty interesting. Factor Fiction, I think. Mana Leak, Waste, Mage. Yeah, they take Mana Leak, Waste, and Mage. Play that. Play a Mage. Sure. This one could name Cabal Therapy. It doesn't really make a difference to me. Okay, so they have Mana Leak up. And I can't Therapy it away. Maybe I sideboarded it incorrectly. This Contagion's actually still pretty valuable. Time to give up on my Contamination Dreams. Because I can Mana Leak around a... Or I can Contagion around a Mana Leak. No, I'll just draw another Swamp eventually. Yeah, so... Like, maximizing my resources isn't fun. It's fun and all, but I just like would so much rather just be like a deck that can draw cards. Innocent blood, literal boo. It will help me either make a zombie token or um, kill an angel. I mean, it'll help me kill an angel if my opponent runs all their angels into this. Go another loop. 
Lots of virtual card advantage here. My opponent completely flooded out, selecting to never cast Armageddon in this game for all the its own stuff that they'll blow up. Eventually, we will draw another spirit. I have to not get my another spirit's swords to plowshares. And they're also just holding up a mana leak. I also have no answer to Exalted Angel, so eventually they will draw Exalted Angel and it will be a problem. This Contagion is still value, so I think it's actually time to just be a beat down guy. So obviously loves getting swords to plowshares. So I can eat a mana leak here. Feels fine. What was the other card they had? They had like a land uh, and the meddling mage. I'm sure I'm not gonna play around double removal because one of the removals is just gonna be swords to plowshares, so. No Exalted Angel with Mana Leak backup one time. Dealer. Maybe their hand is all to Fairy's response. Okay. We lost at like the literal last second, which um, makes me pretty angry. <laughs> is there any way to get around this? We can attack and then there won't be enough blocks. So we just had to be more freaking aggressive. Um... Um, sickening dreams for the draw. Everything gets countered. I can get countered. Boo. That's disgusting. Pretty. I mean, I had to be more aggressive, so. Um, okay, well, let's just, um, draw like an uncounterable removal spell that gets meddling mage. I could have gone duress into contagion. Okay. That, that would have, that was actually an option. Top deck duress would have uh, gotten me there. Um, Yeah, I guess I shouldn't have bitched, uh, ditched the, cont uh, the Contagion because the Contagion is a counter. So I could have just put the counters on um, Exalted Angel um, or like the Smother would have gotten countered and then I would have just killed off the Meddling Mage and then uh, won the game here. So a little bit awkward, but whatever. We learned. We learned. Oh okay, yeah, Zombie Infestation was like good, but only because like I, I just drew like so many cards of your cards end up being dead. A little bit funny and awkward. Um, Jesus, dreams was so bad, huh? I'd rather have edict. I didn't even see the edict there. Uh, Engineering plague, plague, plague was pretty powerful against them. I do have to overpower all their disenchant effects. I mean, I punted that game. I, I actually should have won that game if I just did. If I took a different line, so shrug. Can't be mad at myself for that, or can't be mad at the deck for that. These innocent bloods look kind of bad. So the dress is sort of good. I mean, therapy isn't that exciting right now. Three infestations should be enough. Should be enough. I mean, sweeping's good, but like, I just, like, uh, how am I, I don't have profitable discards. My deck has so much card disadvantage. It's like, I'm never gonna, like this thing is just gonna get mana linked. So I have to go duress into sickening dreams. That's why it's bad. Okay. I mean, maybe I should just board out contamination. I kept, I kept thinking like, I feel like this deck just boards out contamination a lot. It's like, why don't I just be a mono black, like removal deck? Um, maybe I should even take the draw. Okay. This is a hand. It has two contaminations in it. So luckily it also has infestation. Let's get a snow covered swamp this time, even though tainted packed, it doesn't matter. Can we turn, turn three lock somebody like, one time, please. Not a huge fan of the Wasteland Chain. That's about to um, happen to me. In fact, I like am so not into it that I can just like never play Mistress Factory. I guess this is one reason to have one more Engineered Plague. Yeah, this being a, also a human just means it's like kind of crazy. Okay, Contamination Locking. One time, just draw it. Just draw it, one time dealer. Let's get an attack in though. Just draw it one time dealer, please. Duress. Should I wait to duress? Yeah. It's a card in my hand, which translates into maybe a 2-2 zombie. So could become relevant. I can also duress in front of possible Teferi's response. Super relevant. I just lost the game. I lost the last game also because of Teferi's response. I forget that the, one of that thing with the contagion was kind of funny because it was like it's counters. I forget that it's counters and that's why it's a thing. Engineered Plague will be the name, surely. I guess I should have three if my opponent's um, so scared of it. Sure. 
You're going to sort supply shares? Yeah, you can sort supply shares. I'm fine with that, I'm pretty sure. Can we just draw Nether Spirit, though? Like, one time? I'm, I'm like, actually, like, molding over how not often I'm drawing Nether Spirit. Maybe that's, like, too aggressive. Oh, my God, we did it. I think this works right. So my zombie token isn't getting into combat. I have to sacrifice it at the beginning of the next upkeep. And then... I'm going to make a token with zombie infestation and then nether, nether spirit locked my opponent. It's going to take a while, but I'm, I'm going to get there. Oh my God. We, we did it. We contamination locked somebody. Hallelujah. I don't even think they have like, um, like something random, like a Tormod script. Oh, they can play face down exalted angels. It doesn't matter. I, I, this, this is a lock. So upkeep, upkeep. I don't have another creature in there. I just need to not misclick. I'm going to put the contamination on the stack under the nether spirit. That's all I have to do. That's all I have to do. Okay. I guess my opponent has free spells. I'm just going to make a 2-2 two -two every other turn. Contamination under. I would like to do this. Yes. I would like to sacrifice this. Yes. Draw a turn. My opponent gets in for four. Oh, hell yeah. Give me nothing. Give me freaking nothing. Okay. Yeah, passing. Gonna take, gonna take five. I actually have to um, start yielding to stuff for interest of time because this has become a time match. Okay, gonna block the creature that can become a. Th oh no, I'm gonna block the weathered wayfarer, of course. Hopefully, they don't have chromatic sphere. They, they do have morph eventually, huh? Man, even when you you perform the lock, it takes forever for you to win. It's okay. I can't be mad at a dub, right? It's a match win. This is like a deck that exists in the meta. So these are all things that are super relevant. Okay. Opponent would have to play a lot of Exalted Angels in a row. I guess I can kill Mishra's Factory with a Wasteland. So it's better to take out the Meddling Mage. I can also Port Factory. I can also draw Innocent Blood. We're just speed mode clicking here. And we're just running down. Like, I feel like a clock is going to end this first. Clock is just feels like it's guaranteed to end this first. Clock or a misclick on my part. Luckily, the contamination's always on top. And then I'm, I'm going to start yielding to the contamination because I'm just doing this every turn. Opponent gets in for another two. If they have another Mistress Factory, I'm like screwed. <laughs> if they have another Morph, I'm screwed. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose. I take two next turn and I take two the turn after. I have to draw like doesn't matter what I draw Lord the reverend mantra totally mattered oh no smother one time if they draw mistress factory too I'm just like dead All right I've got a lot of outs I've got smothers I've got like whatever I don't know they maybe they have mis misdirection or something maybe I should have saved my reanimate like a long time ago so that I could do something contagion doesn't get me there so much stuff doesn't get me there. Come on. One time. One time. Dude, I hate this. I hate this so much. I mean, I shouldn't lose game two, but I'm in so much pain. Maybe I shouldn't have like been so aggressive pitching my mistress factories. I used the wasteland on a factory though. No, maybe I should board out Cabal, Cabal therapies. I don't know. There's a lot of things I can do different. Like clearly I, I, I didn't understand what I, what I needed to do. Well, that's, that's, um, that's a sour one, but lots of things were learned and I don't think it necessarily reflects on the deck. So it's all good. All right. League game. League match. Number two. Contamination playing against Ben HR. I think Ben HR might be a black player. Uh, we didn't talk too much about how this uh, deck is a little bit yikesy against some black, uh, black mirrors. I'm actually going to keep this right because... Uh, Tainted Pack will certainly find me uh, what I need. And then um, I've got like Contagion if things get dicey and eventually I'll draw a Swamp and like I'm on the play so I can port them until I draw a Swamp. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. They have the Wasteland. They're going to be playing Mono Black Contamination themselves, right? Like surely. Um, I'm happy about that wasteland. I want this game to be a little bit slower with uh, with this draw. Although I'm quickly becoming scared that 
my I ran into a horrible matchup because, like I said, I think Ben is a black black player. But who knows? Who knows? This could be like so many different decks right now. Oh, we got the Nether Spirit. Okay. God, I hope my opponent is um is playing a uh, non-black deck. Just like one time, I just need it to be not a black deck. I'm going to Tainted Pact for a land as soon as I find the first land. And then I can play another spirit. I can therapy myself. I can just cast the contamination. Um, lots of super reason. No, it is the mirror. <laughs> no. Contamination mirror. How bad could it be? <laughs> My opponent's like, I'm 0 and 5. I'm just like, no, that means I'm going to go 0 and 5. Yeah. Yeah. What, how do you even sideboard for the mirror? I was like joking about the mirror too in the um, in the opening, and like we're just like totally there. It's it's literally the mirror. It's literally the mirror. Okay, if my if my opponent is like zero and five, I'm and and hasn't won a single game. Like, listen, I know that people are just like, oh, you, you just don't just don't understand the idiosyncrasies of how to play my deck. It's still just like you know, surely you can catch a match, right? This is this match is going to go to time. Honestly, I should like ask my opponent if we just want to like let this one not count so we can like move on with our lives so I can like test test for the PSS tonight or like sleeve up some cards. But uh, yeah. Opponent second swamp. I'm just doing nothing. I just continue to do nothing. Well, luckily I can pitch my contamination just just like we designed. It's going to be like whoever draws more skeletal scrying. Yep, just a little bit of pass, pass back, do nothing. Like, I don't even know, like, I don't know, first person to draw a uh, zombie infestation, maybe. A lot of these cards are just super bad. The mistress factories are going to matter. Uh, eventually, I'm just going to hand size this nether spirit. Oh, I should have hand sized the nether spirit. Oops, just playing on autopilot. I'm also reading an email. Sorry, sorry, y'all. Content is uh, not the uh, not the greatest right now. All right, let's hand size another spirit like we were supposed to. We have a two two, y'all. We have a two two. They have they have another the spirit as well. So we're going to be playing another spirit, um, another spirit chicken, which is a little awkward if I do say so myself. I guess I could have cabal therapy them that turn. Gone for the double cabal therapy. Send blood, sure. <laughs> like what? Like what are we even doing? Reanimate. Sure. I have my own innocent bloods. It's a pretty weird one too because I'm actually like I don't want them to be able to grind out my infestation tokens with um uh with their nether spirit. So um. I'm actually just going to sit here and then just like gather my infestation tokens. Cabal therapy. What have I revealed to the previous one? Another spirit contamination, innocent blood, tainted pact, contagion. Okay, so definitely pitching innocent blood and definitely pitching contamination and contagion. I don't have the patience for this man. I want to get on with my life. Innocent blood for value. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get in for four. Don't mind that. It's going to be my turn to um, Cabal Therapy for value. Hopefully I draw my reanimate. That skeletal's crying. Just in time. And for four. So my goal is to name a card that is in their hand. Oh, they're just going to go for the Contagion to kill one token. It's kind of good. They exiled their redundant Nether Spirit. Interesting, because I could have I could have actually Cabal Therapied for Nether Spirit. So the only possible cards they can have in their hand are like three drops. Um, I'm not really too scared of anything, but I mean, I'll just get my Cabal Therapy value right. Try to pick off their Skeletal Scrying. And if they have a, a Scare card. Oh, nice. So I can... Definitely do this. Okay, so maybe I should have started on that, but it looked kind of funny. Okay, so they're waiting till they draw Skeletal Scrying, and I am going to be applying the beatdowns until then. And 
I don't mind that at all. And I have my own scrying for when I do that. Can't wait to draw a land. Yeah, gonna gonna draw the land, I'm pretty sure. Mm, port is not the most exciting thing. They have a smother, so I am going to scry away another spirit as soon as um, they're going to smother. Okay. So I have options. Uh, I'm gonna play the land because I'm gonna scrying for three next turn. Okay. Okay, got ahead because I drew some of the only cards that matter. So we definitely want Coffin Purge. I joked about it being for the mirror and uh, here it is. Uh, nothing else matters. Like, so Dreams is good because sometimes they will have infestation and I won't. Contagion's super bad. I'm never gonna cast it. Um, Smother is pretty bad. Engineer Plague is literally useless. We have all the same cards. All right. How many other cards? Oh, right. I have to board out Contamination. Forgot. Um, okay. I guess we're just playing everything. We're going to just have the stuff out for our Mistress Factories. Sure. Sure. Any other cards that are completely turned off? Almost. What a joke. Okay. We have the Reanimate. We have like a lot of cards that matter. But that's kind of bad because we're just going to get those cards that matter to rest. So, boo. So I would take the Skeletal Scry and I'd take the Dress because they're going to have a zombie infestation. Guaranteed. And then this game is going to be super sad for me. Double reanimate. Don't mind if I do. Play Mistress Factory. I'm okay with getting Wastelanded this turn as long as I get to attack next turn. Also matters because I'll be able to block a zombie token. So they have the zombie infestation. We have double Nether Spirit. And we can sort of clear our graveyard. Okay, no zombie infesting yet. We are going to start nether spiriting. So uh, one of the huge tensions actually in this deck is um, trying to get a good, like a good sized scrying. You want your scrying to be like big, you know? You want it to be like three or more or whatever. Um, but, um, if you're pitching all your lands to zombie infestation, then it won't be three or more. So got to think about things like that. Snow covered swamp. Sure. Think I'm going to play a land and play another spirit. And then this is like the last, the last land I play. I like want to sandbag every single land from here, something like that. But we're just going to sit and stare for a while until like I find my um, skeletal scrying. I didn't want to take the innocent blood reanimate reanimate line because it just felt super, super like, I don't know. It's just like doesn't get me that much. It get like if they have uh, one removal spell, it gets me like an edict gets me too. it's kind of relevant. Um, but it does get something into my graveyard, which is kind of reasonable but now we can just kind of do this i wouldn't mind drawing a lot of cards but i don't know i'm like i'm gonna save the scrying until i can get like a lot a lot of value out of it this is the only way that i'm gonna pull ahead here i can't just like draw two cards or draw draw i mean innocent blood plus reanimate plus scrying would get me a reasonable amount ahead but not enough right they did okay they, they know about the scrying too so a, a therapy can get my scrying. So, uh, so they know about reanimate as well. So because they know about reanimate, it's definitely something to be worried about. Port, port's fine. So innocent blood, reanimate, and then scrying for three. Sure. There's like literally nothing bigger for us to reanimate, but at least this means my opponent doesn't like know what's up. Cough and purge targeting my nether spirit. I mean, Sure. I have another one. Flashback targeting your nether spirit? No. Okay. I guess I sort of understand. Because like the second one is going to get my second nether spirit. I'm going to be like coffin purge targeting coffin purge. That's like what's going to happen. Edict. Edict is interesting, but edict plus reanimate from this spot. Instead, I can just skeletal scrying for four. It's going to edict at end of turn. 
three mana for a Skeletal Scrying for two. Okay. That's okay with me. That's much happier to be the me with the bigger Skeletal Scrying. I'm going to be able to Skeletal Scrying for four. I think that's an error. My opponent getting a little antsy. Most of the cards you draw out of this deck are basically unplayable. So, okay. Will we trade uh, other spirits? I mean, if they want to cough and purge themselves, I guess that's okay. Because if they cough and purge themselves at my end step, I'll just like reanimate the other one eventually. I don't know. I don't know how good this is. It's like worse if they cough and purge me though, because my nether spirit's like an engine. You can contagion their own nether spirit. That play was always available to them. Okay, I'm going to edict to zombie token while I still can, but my skeletal scrying is going to go huge. Yeah, that's good for me. Yeah, I'm skeletal scrying for the maximum here. One, two, four, five, six. Perfect. Not going to try to draw a contagion. Will try to draw a contagion. Skeletal scrying for six. Draw six. Pretty much guarantee a win from here. Unmask. Gonna hard cast that. A reanimate was like a mild consideration last turn. So maybe I should have thought a little, a little bit longer about that. Get their nether spirit back, which is fine. I've got plenty of value here. My life total is quite low. Okay, so they're gonna cash in the um, coffin purge. Oh, opponent missed their coffin purge. I'm gonna hard cast unmask and therapy away. Okay, so I can't do anything, huh? Wasteland, infestation, like this. Chilling. My life total is low, but my resources are up. I've maybe played a little bit, bit too many lands. I technically have to try and be like, I do need to try to get all the nether spirits out of here. I've only got one left. Uh, yeah, I'll put Coffin Purge into my hand. Okay, so now we have an answer for all the nether spirits in the world. And we're happy about that. We have a lot of ports. We have infestation advantage. Could have waited for the second Mishra's. Don't think I wanted to. Okay, porting doesn't matter. Creatures are better. Okay, chilling. If they purge their own spirit, they should know that they purged my spirit, okay? That's not a big deal. So now we're just playing the infestation game. Guess I should pact on my main phase because I could just like draw anything relevant. Opponent has a spell they can cast, okay? They'll take Coffin Purge. Okay, well they have their own Coffin Purge, but that doesn't matter. Uh, I will maybe therapy Coffin Purge. Uh, I shouldn't get rid of ports. Ports interact well with my opponent's Misha's factories. Uh, no Polluted Delta. Yes, Mistress Factory. I gotta say Tainted Pack has been a playable card so far. Cabal Therapy, naming Coffin Purge. This counts as value, believe it or not. This counts as value. Because they're they're using Coffin Purge, which is like this like crazy card. And um I get to purge another spirit, and then I get to purge their purge whenever I feel like it. I could have also just reanimated, but I think reanimate's better off as a 2-2. Opponent could get in with zombie token. No, it's not two. I'm just going to keep cooking. Hopefully draw a Mistress Factory, but I'm still just gonna keep up the aggression, I think. Uh, no, Mistress Factory is too good of a blocker, too good of a blocker. I shouldn't have played out, oh, I th didn't, I, didn't I play out all these like swamps before? It was like something to be worried about. Like I, I played all of the swamps before um, Skeletal Scrying. So it's not like bad play out swamp situation. But yeah, I think we're about to make my opponent in in the 06 world, which uh, is not ideal for them. Going to hard cast Contagion, which is a uh, sick. Guess Contagion is good and relevant. Relevant to get to get up to five land so I can even cast Contagion. Okay. Opponent not pitching anything relevant here. See if they go for an attack. They don't. Let's tap a land. I can go for an attack now. And yeah, the skeletal scrying just making all the difference here. And we'll contagion. And we will win this combat. Well, we can make another token. 
we can win the game after making another token. That'll be a lock. Basically nothing they can draw. That's kind of an interesting mirror, but I think my opponent simply made the mistake of casting Skeletal Scrying ever. Uh, they have to wait for me to uh, use discard on it. All right, GG's, we uh, win the mirror. All right, let's jump into round three versus Artie. Artie, a mainstay in the videos these days. And we have a hand. This hand is crazy. So I can double discard. It would cost me a skeletal scrying or a zombie infestation. You have to imagine that double discard is good against a lot of decks. But, um,. The big thing about pitching, because I also get the flashback next turn, but Skeletal Scrying is really the only way I'm going to get make this uh, card advantage back. So, uh, all right, we are playing Artie's um, Grotog setup. So what can we do here? We can take away all these creatures, but they're pretty redundant to each other. So I definitely want to get this portent out of here just because it's going to help Artie find the gushes and the other sources. And I can just like deal with the rest of these cards. And this Rotting Giant is actually kind of funny. I didn't realize this card existed. This card is playable. Um, so yeah, let's get rid of this portent, kind of mess up his groove. And then... Get a snow covered swamp, qual therapy. There's like reason to wait, but I don't love waiting. And we're gonna go ahead and name Meddling Mage. Meddling Mage is kind of the most annoying card, even though he's not likely to soul read my um my removal. But Meddling Mage kind of sucks on the battlefield against me. So let's just get rid of the dryad. All right, hopefully we can beat Grotog. I do not have high hopes because of um Freaking uh, Mox Diamond works under a contamination lock. So I have to go like get Null Rod and then deal with Mox Diamond. It's pretty obnoxious. Already draws into a poor tent. So he pretty quickly undoes the bad news for me. Okay, we got to set up our Skeletal Scrying for three with this Duress. Hopefully we um, catch a gush. Yes, okay. Okay, we're in business. Already was of course thinking of gushing. And next turn is just going to be a City of Brass plus um, whatever. So tapping an island to stop a cantrip does not excite me compared to um, getting in for two. Oh, right. Well, maybe I'll just Cabal Therapy. No, I'm not going to. Not paying enough attention, of course. What was the first land I played? I played Fetch Land and then I played Port. Okay, yeah, of course. That makes sense. Skeletal Scrying for three here is going to be like our own gush. Big question is if I want to scry for four. Artie's had one draw at a counterspell effect. Not sure what Artie's thinking about. Guess he drew a very interesting card. All right, goes for Brass. Looked up the contamination list on uh, TC decks maybe so that he could uh, figure out what to name with this uh, meddling mage. Name whatever you want, honestly. Innocent Blood makes the most sense. I do have four copies. There's another spirit. All right, hopefully Artie did not top deck days and we're in business. All right, Engineered Plague naming human isn't really gonna excite me, but 
actually engineered plague naming Dryad is going to be the stronger play. Pretty sure Artie doesn't have main deck sorts plowshares, so I'll be enjoying that. This therapy does not quite excite me. Eventually, um, I'm going to want to get some therapy leverage, but for now, just kind of doing this. Running giant, huh? Yeah, he does have the swords. I have to therapy swords to plowshares before casting my um, nether spirit. Very awkward for me. Luckily, I have the battlefield, but should my deck just play Rotting Giant? Tainted Pact. Not interested. Cast Tainted Pact. Um, no, I don't want Wasteland. Pretty irrelevant. I don't want this card that I can't cast. Uh, I don't really want it to rest either. If he had gas, uh, gosh, he would have cast it. Don't really want a contamination right now. Don't want a polluted delta. I mean, a cabal therapy is not great. I'll take another spirit. Okay, so we're gonna name counterspell then sword supply shares. Peak. <laughs> okay. Everybody knows what everybody has. Gush. Okay. The fact that this resolves definitely means Counterspell is not the most secure name, but it's gonna be the most relevant one, I think, because I still need this to just like be able to move through my turn. A foil, okay. Those aren't very good, but I am going to take out this um, Mox Diamond maybe. I'd already float the mana. Yeah, I do need to take out the Mox Diamond, I'm pretty sure. Did I? Play a land already? No. Okay, so I can cut already off colored mana, which I think is relevant, but this turn, I'm just gonna hold up the Mishra's activation, pretty sure. And like, yeah, let's just get rid of Mox Diamond. Okay, pitches two islands and a foil. Do I want to hose the Mox Diamond even harder? The answer is, I have three more contaminations to draw towards. Giving up a Mistress Factory is kind of bad, but I think it's relevant. This is this is how hard I have to go to get rid of Mox Diamond. And okay, and I can always engineer Plague naming Giant, so that's the that's the bright side. And I don't even think an attack this turn is good from Artie. I should have thought about Wasteland. I think uh, I think I might take the damage. Hard to say, I think I will. I think I won't rather. Oh shoot, I forgot to do the thing. Oops, sure, I uh, never mind. Really needed Rotting Giant to not be on the battlefield. Okay, this Engineered Plague is embarrassing, but so is my deck. And uh, yeah, punted, so I'm on Simon there. At least should have named Dryad. Okay, feeling pretty bad right now but at least we have unlimited chump blocker. Um, but yeah, I, I navigated the game poorly once again. I think this stack is very clearly like, requires a little bit of precision that I haven't been displaying. Um, I think probably just a bad attitude or, you know, not, not staying focused and whatnot, but you know, we'll taint it back and hopefully find something good. Uh, yeah, I'll take a zombie infestation. Play around a daze. The chump blocking will continue until morale improves. I'm hard to imagine letting the city of Bra uh, the city of brass clock mattering. No, no, it matters. We're like we're like grinding so little value right now. Oh, an attack was in order that turn as well. Can't believe I'm gonna have to do this null rod dystopia plan. Fine with this. Okay, so we're gonna just play infinite chump blockers as our strategy, eventually draw a smother, or eventually get the damage through. I thought Rotting Giant was Wretched Anurid, so I got confused. Well, I should definitely name Human next time. Already taken a check back at the predominant contamination deck list, and I'm really wishing I had engineered play. Like, I wouldn't have to play Giant if I didn't, if I did the block correctly. Skeletal Scrying, definitely a good name. Although um, one funny thing about the Grotog deck that I am very like intimately aware of is that it is very vulnerable to being chump blocked. It has no way to pu push up 
damage. Guess we'll just hold. I'm not gonna attack with tokens. I'm just gonna sit here and let the City of Brass do all the work. Glad I didn't wasteland it. We could still win this game, hilariously. We have like a few outs to removal. We have like reanimate targeting Psychotog eventually. And we could get Armageddon at some point, so that's why it's good to hold back. Oh, we could draw Sickening or one of Sickening Dreams. It definitely gets counterspelled, obviously, but maybe it doesn't. So yeah, chump blocker every other turn. That's how you uh, take them down. Obviously, um, Psychotog, like drawing Psychotog would make a bigger difference, but also the opponent's deck eventually floods out. So that's one thing that we got going for us. Seven more turns. I can make uh, three zombie tokens, which would be enough to push through um, two extra damage but could force some amount of chump blocking. Opt, try it to a 4-4. Four, four. Nice, nice size for a query and dry it, if I do say my, so myself. Um, already can of course level with an Armageddon eventually, but hopefully that's at the towards the bottom of his deck. Another dry it, don't love that. Could make this gush Armageddon a real situation. So forcing chump blockers here doesn't feel like a thing yet. I hope everyone's enjoying this gameplay. This is pre-modern at its finest. I don't think this should be happening right now again because there shouldn't be a rotting giant on the battlefield, which means like, you know, it changes everything. But I think the contaminated guys are gonna pull this one out. So, you know, zombie tokens get in there. Already, of course, post cyborg has the option of uh, getting into some city of brass, or not city of brass, sorry, uh, his own engineered plague situation. So he can um, plague name, double plague naming a spirit, which really gets me. And then it's pretty funny. An interesting attack. Can't really tell what kind of, what kind of cards this attack signifies, but um, you know, we're pretty priced into like a chump block and value blocks. Cause I'm not gonna triple block the dryad. Cause even then already I could cast three spells out of six cards in hand. Yeah. Like I said, Chump Blockers is good against Grotog. So if it's just a Quirion Dryad attack, I am happy for to go for a... Uh, I would have like quad blocked the Quirion Dryad if it was just a Quirion Dryad attack. Yeah, Stifle is fine I start stifling your city of brass triggers are you gonna give your Korean dry a trample I don't see the vision right now if I'm being honest um, I guess it's making both of the dryads really big it's taps already out of um counter spell um should I just take seven it's probably doesn't really matter I mean no psychotog in sight from already main deck graveyard hate consideration what happens if i just make two tokens attack no doesn't do it let's get my trump blocker back nice get another blocker we love a zombie token that doesn't cost us it's gonna make my crack back lethal swing happen a bit faster a um armageddon could have busted this game open maybe that mage doesn't matter has to attack with both dryads Pretty happy to just take six here, I'm pretty sure, because putting me at that life total still finds me in like a decent range. Yeah, I think so. I can make two zombies, go for the lethal attack, lose to a swords of plowshares. Don't really want that to happen. Swords of plowshares probably would have been cast already. Um, and I would lose the innocent blood and I have no reason to be impatient, sort of. Give me the option to force blocking with all the mages, maybe? It's kind of a decent plan. Possibility of a foil. I don't know, that smelled like a stifle. Did that smell like a stifle to anyone else? I can go grab a rotting giant. Seems kind of fine. I'm going to reanimate a meddling mage to make sorts of plowshares probably. I don't know, I, I can't overthink it because there's like another game to play and we're getting low on time. Like this is maybe an aggressive line, but I might need an aggressive line. Like I might be actually like forced into 
uh, this exact, like forced to make this exact play because of how dire the situation is. Okay, I catch the triple block. Okay, and then I just chill. I'd rather innocent blood and then innocent blood and then reanimate or something. No, I'd rather just reanimate the meddling mage. I mean, already was thinking about stifle. Uh, that hurt my brain. That was a bad attack. I should have never made that attack. Yeah, the foil's good here. One card left in hand. Yeah, I punted this game away. I, I keep punting with this deck. I'm gonna go, I, I think this is a, this is like a kind of a good deck and then um, some people like myself just like don't really know how to play it. Um, and that's okay. Um, you know, um, I didn't, I didn't think about the fact that my, after my innocent blood was unlocked, I thought I would get the dryad for free, but, um, obviously all my creatures died in combat. So that was the mistake that I made. So now I have to draw a removal spell or another spirit off the top. And if I don't, I lose. And if Artie has, um, a psychotog, I also lose. And so, you know, there are, uh, there are things in my way. A contagion doesn't get there, huh? Okay. And played one too many lands, maybe? Yeah, I punted that. That's okay. Have some differently named removal. I have to... I would rather just board out contamination than boarding in all these null rods. One copy of Dreams is fine. Zombie infestation is good. Reanimate's great. Dress Cabal Therapy is pretty necessary. Contagion's not great because I don't want to play the Engineered Plague. So like contagioning one thing is kind of bad. I want the snuff out for sure. And then I actually do want to play these Dystopia. So we're going to trim on Contamination because we have to get a Null Rod for Contamination to matter anyways. Ugh, Null Rod plan seems bad. Boarding out contamination seems better than Null Rod. I'll just play these two Parish. I could even play the Unmask. Try to trust the process, I think. I'll just take out these Tainted Packs, right? Tainted Pack never gets me where I want to go. Zombie Infestation is really good. Zombie Infestation makes Sickening Dreams not as good. Sickening Dreams might be necessary to deal with um, a good name. Like all my removal getting out named. Parish is kind of better though. Innocent Blood's okay. Let's just ship it. <laughs> Maybe we'll get the lock. Okay, let's boogie. Maybe I take the draw. Okay, we have we have almost everything we need. I, I want to play the Null Rod after he runs out Mox, but obviously I can't. I did technically lose to the Stifle, so gotta hand it to him. All right, Artie, good luck using your Mox Diamonds. Oh my god, I have it all. Oh god, goes for Meddling Mage. Could meddling mage contamination, but obviously that would be bad. Innocent blood, good first name. This is resilient to a day, so we're going to do it. Um, so notably, I could have jammed contamination and then sacrifice, activated, sacrificed the mistress factory, then gone for another spirit to go for the clean cutoff. But um, it's really weak to days, so just going to play it a little bit safe. Green Dryad is a fear that I had, but that's okay. Swords of Plowshares is another fear I had. Okay, so maybe I did have to cut off the Swords of Plowshares line, be bad against days to be good against Swords of Plowshares. Zombie Infestation isn't bad. I really drew perfect off the top, but didn't really set myself up well. So I need Infestation for sure. What would you have done? Would you have jammed turn three contamination, activate Mistress, sacrifice Mistress, play another spirit, get your nether spirit days, lose the game? My opponent's threatening to cast two spells. No, if one of them swords the plowshares, it gets me. Okay, let's get the port going. As soon as we draw the next nether spirit, we have engaged the lock. I would like a zombie token, I'm pretty sure. Threatens double, double spell again. Just gonna single block. One of those spells probably um, probably is like 
ice or, or not ice, but sorts of plowshares. So you're just plowshares. Um, oh my God, it can't, it can't activate on itself because it's a, oh man, this null rod is uh, pretty awkward. This deck is just giving me the business. It's just like really punishing me for kind of sucking. I mean, I guess I could have gone for the jam. Seems kind of loose to like just jam straight in. I had a, basically the best hand that you could ask for. I, I should have obviously been aware of the Mistress Factory, but it obviously cost me triple block, maybe would have been in order at like a later date. Sipping Dreams is not going to help anyone right now. Double port, sure. Maybe double port isn't good. It does mean I can resolve stuff through Counterspell eventually. It also means I can beat um, Disenchant. Give me something good, dealer. I mean, I'm not going to port that many times. Port blue, additional City of Brass. Maybe I should have just waited till I have four cards in hand. Isn't that kind of horrible? Take the last four that I can. Actually, I can't even take this because I won't have Sickening Dreams up in case I draw a removal spell. Doesn't matter, right? Atrocious. I mean, I'm not happy with how I played, but I mean, I don't know. It's like no guarantees. I don't know. I, I keep spewing value. It's just what, what keeps happening. So I can't be too mad at that, but oh boy. I mean, I, I you know, Alvaro is just a master. What can you say? All right. We are in match four or one, two. We have once again, a little borderline keeper. Um, and we're on the draw. Hopefully my opponent plays a creature on turn one for me to innocent blood. Otherwise, I don't even know what I'm doing with my life. All right. We are going to, we could be playing another mirror. Play Blood St. Meyer. Hang out. Oh, no, we're playing against black white control. Yeah, you can, you can have some, uh, you can have some of my lands. This is, this does not feel like a great matchup, but I'm trying to think of all the black cards that they have. Like if I cut them off white, they can't play any creatures. They can't cycle Decree of Justice. They can't like play Exalted Angel or they can play Exalted Angel, but they can't flip Exalted Angel. So Locke might still be alive, um, but hard to, hard to say exactly. I mean, I think right now, like reanimate targeting um, Exalted Angel is going to be like the way to go. My opponent also multi five. So I get a shot here. Oh, missed the land drop is also good for me. Keep the number of snow covered swamps and basic swamps in my deck. Somewhat even keep porting. Eventually I will draw something. Oh, we have a contagion that that's a card that's going to get sideboarded out. Yeah. I wish we had a zombie contamination or zombie infestation. <laughs> this game, instead of getting a duress, dress looking totally fine from opponent side. I should also stop playing lands eventually. I like the thinning, especially because this game's going to go so long. Um, and the setup for a skeletal scrying. Oh, we're going to cycle a decree for just a card here. That's good news for me because my innocent blood was basically useless into potential decree of justice. Oh, skeletal scrying for two is also good. Um, actually, I take that back. I don't think skeletal scrying for two is good. I think opponent wants to use skeletal scrying big, similar to like when we played the mirror and my big skeletal scryings made a larger difference. Also wouldn't mind a, um, wouldn't mind like a mistress factory or something, really anything. I've just been, I've just gone so many turns without anything happening. And before I do anything else, I also need to just like draw, um, I need to draw really well. Like I need to draw uh, Cabal Therapy before I draw another spirit because my opponent's just holding Swords of Plowshares and, you know, stuff and things. Just like hold this duress until I, ha I have something to bust through with the duress. And um, yeah, just play the grindy game. My opponent with a the Eternal Dragon engine is definitely a little bit um, like scarier. So I do get to port this Dust Bowl unless of course my opponent preempts it. They are getting annoyed by this. Address Cabal Therapy is pretty good. I'm pretty into um, that. Just because if my opponent has a big creature, I get to Cabal Therapy reanimate it. Okay, so they don't have a big creature. Um, but yeah, Decree of Justice is the most annoying card for me. 
and um, I can just therapy the disenchant before it matters. Uh, sad to not find one of my opponent's creatures, of course. But yeah, decree just turns off. I, I give, it gives them a clock. It turns off innocent blood, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and I can this just removal just doesn't matter. At some point, they might vindicate a land if they get super bored. I'm super bored. Oops. Guess I need lands, huh? I want a skeletal scrying for four or more. I think obviously, if my opponent duresses me, it's going to force the issue. But I need to skeletal scrying for the win, essentially. Oh man, this decree. That's a good one. It's pretty grindy. Luckily, they are sort of drawing lands where it doesn't matter. The sideboard strategy is going to be annoying because I have to bring in Engineered Plague to like turn Innocent Blood back on, or I need to board out Innocent Blood. Oh, Sickening Dreams isn't bad. Take a little bit more damage. It's not the end of the world. Obviously, my opponent could have more decrees, so it's like a thing. Okay. So now that I think about it, I should have dreams because I need to have seven life so that I can um so that I can reanimate an eternal dragon at some point. So I can therapy dragon, dreams, flashback therapy. I could do some stuff. I think I can if I really tune in, like dial in. I, I think I can um, navigate in a, a effective board position. It might have to start with drawing three cards because my life total is going to become a pretty important resource here because sickening dreams deals damage to me. Um, and, um, reanimate deals damage to me. I guess no, I don't have to play around haunting echoes in game one. Okay. So we just need another spirit. Okay. So we can really rip through my opponent's hand, dress, dress, cabal therapy, sickening dreams, or what should we do? I mean, my opponent dress, dress. So dress away the vindicate, um, therapy, the dragon. Do I need a dreams at any point? The dragon is going to deal seven damage to me. I feel like I have to freaking dreams this turn seems kind of bad. And then the dreams is just going to pitch innocent blood. Dreams is going to pitch contamination. No contamination can still get me out of this game. Let's um, be a good magic player and sequence so our discard starts first. Oh, Wrath of God. So now I have to dress the Vindicate and the Wrath of God. Okay. I'll name Eternal Dragon. I'll reanimate turning Eternal Dragon. Take seven. Then I take one. And then I try to kill my opponent before they draw anything. And I think they have one, two, three, four, five, six lands. So I need to stop them from top decking an additional eternal dragon. Okay. Not looking good. Don't think I could have waited. Could have waited if I just played sickening dreams, but some point you gotta like be a tempo player. They're like, should I get one damage in? I mean, eventually they can draw another decree of justice. Okay. Smother opens things up, but I can't smother an angel, obviously. Um, this contamination is looking like a pipe dream, so let's attack. And obviously at any point, a decree of justice can kill me, which makes life obviously a little bit sketchy, but we got to do what we got to do, I think. Hopefully they play face down angels or something. And there's so much, I mean, they can just draw Vindicate. I just really need them to gas out entirely. Wrath of God. Yeah. Wish it was an exalted angel I picked up, but it's not... Wish I had Mistress Factory at any point this game. Wish, wish, wish. Dystopia doesn't even seem good. I have to play Coffin Purges, I think. Oh, right on time. I, of course, am, there's a disenchant in their hand, which is uh, gets me. Not loving life. Maybe I should have waited for a bigger skeletal scrying. Just played it slow. This dystopia doesn't even seem that good. Engineered Plague seems kind of bad. Everything seemed, uh, I don't know. Maybe their deck is just too grindy. Wish I had a way to exile this. I kind of need to contamination lock my opponent like very soon. And then even if I do, it's not going to guarantee the game for a couple of reasons. One of which is that my opponent's holding the disenchant. So they are uh, preparing to have disenchant available for them. 
on any turn that I play Contamination. So once I top deck Nether Spirit, I'm going to play Nether Spirit, flashback, therapy, name, disenchant, play Contamination. Then my opponent won't be able to do anything besides play face down Angels, which my Mistress Factory covers for now. And then it'll be a slow death. So Nether Spirit, all therapy. I'll start with the therapy for disenchant. Actually, I need a therapy. Um, I have to therapy Eternal Dragon. Oh, Jesus. That's so bad, but I literally have to do it or else I just die. My opponent gets to pay five mana to trade with the card every turn. Life could have been better. Cycle Eternal Dragon. Soon they're going to have the mana to play it in the same turn. Okay, it's Enchant Vindicate and Haunting Echoes. I would actually wouldn't mind getting Haunting Echoes because um, it would get me closer to Nether Spirit. Main deck Haunting Echoes is a choice. I think it's... A little thin for game ones. Lots of decks that Haunting Echoes doesn't do anything against. And then even in certain spots, like, I mean, they'll get all my Cabal Therapies, which is reasonable here. But um, I pitched their Disenchant, so. Okay, five. They're still short. They should leave lands. They should leave Contagion. Oh, maybe my uh, my deck doesn't contain any win conditions after um, after this Haunting Echoes. My only win condition is going to be um, nether, just nether spirits. Okay, they didn't pick up dragon, so we pass. Pick up dragon this turn. There's the nether spirit. Okay. So do we unmask our opponent and then cast nether spirit? So what can they have? Disenchant? Decree of justice. I don't have time. I have eight cards in library. I need to deal a lot of damage. Float white. Use it or lose it. No white float. Good news for me. I no longer have any zombie infestations in hand, so I think playing out Wasteland is fine. And then I just need to find the other three Nether Spirits before my opponent finds Exalted Angel. <laughs> just testing to see if it's bugged. Nether Spirit. Okay. Seven attacks. They don't have any black removal. It's all uh, Vindicate, Wrath of God, and Swords of Plowshares. So they just need to draw a face down Exalted Angel. Nether Spirit. Bloated Delta. I don't think... I need to thin? Question mark? Seven attacks, six attacks. I guess I am racing to find, like I need to find the second. I have two more, another spirits. It doesn't matter, right? Cause the draw puts me one turn closer. Oh, I'm not casting that. I don't actually know how I'm supposed to manage this, but my deck is all tainted packs anyways. There it is. So yeah, if I tainted packed in the last turn, I don't think it, don't think it would have made a difference. I really don't know, but we're actually going to win this, I think. Oh man, they have the Exalted Angel. No, they don't have the Exalted Angel. Eventually we'll get the fourth Nether Spirit. And then it won't matter if they have Exalted Angel. Too bad morphs have no creature type. Three cards left in library. I think we drew our Nether Spirits in time here. Now we beat Exalted Angel, so good job team. Okay, a win's a win. Um, we, we made it out alive. So Contagion's kind of funny because it sometimes kills Angel. I really think I just need to have Engineered Plague for a soldier. Coffin Purge. Because Engineered Plague turns on all my Edict effects and that's like kind of matters. Let's start by boarding out these, these cards. Those are bad. Smother is unplayable. So if I don't play Innocent Blood and Edict, my only way to deal with Angels and Dragons is Snuff Out. <laughs> So I have to play those cards. And then, well, the other way, other option would be to play Dystopia, but Dystopia is also an Injured Plague and Edict. So Dystopia would mean that I don't have to play Coffin Purge because Dystopia just means they can, they don't like pick up the dragon for a while, but eventually I lose the life. So I'd rather just Coffin Purge the dragon. I feel like Unmask is a little too like big explosive turns. The timing on it was perfect. The game that I had it, but the rest of the time, I think I'm going to play a longer game. So we'll just run it like this. We'll draw everything when we need it. It's fine. Oh, I guess we have to worry about Phyrexian Furnace. Uh, I'm not going to, I don't want to play Null Rod though. Well, Null Rod is so bad. Let's try to just tempo them out. Okay. This is another hand that I feel like I should mulligan, but it's good against Gerard's verdict. Oh my God. Okay. How do we, 
Oh man, if we had Unmask, we could assemble a combo so quick. Zombie infestation one time, please. Oh, hit me with the, oh no. Needed them to hit me with their Jarrah's Verdict. Can you imagine if they hit me with the Jarrah's Verdict there? Eternal Dragon Cycle, boring. So we are not going to commit the combo, obviously. And I'm not gonna commit the Nether Spirit because of the uh, possibility of um, getting Plowshared. Um, I can Nether Spirit Innocent Blood, but it doesn't quite work. So we're just gonna play Mistress Factory and start the Mistress Factory beating. See if I can draw Plowshares opponent just playing lands and passing. Not a huge deal. I could start with a Contamination and lose my Mistress Factory. Let's see if I can bait out a Plowshares. Should I be more patient? I think I should get damage in because um, I can't um, animate my factory into future Decree of Justice. So just gotta get in while the getting's good and then next turn, start thinking about setting up for Nether Spirit, Innocent Blood myself. I really need um, the uh, Really need the engineer plague soon. Flicking pool that gets wastelanded. Opponent in for two or one rather. Not a big deal. Undraw a card. Coffin purge. Wasteland this. Force him to float the mana. No, no mana float. So I can safely attack with Mistress Factory one more time. We're doing okay, and um, I can always hold up Coffin purge in response to the. Eternal Dragon activation, so don't have to worry about that, really. I'm happy to trade with an opponent's Disenchant or Source of Plowshares here, of course. Cycle for another one. I really need Engineered Plague now. They should have made two tokens for sure. Uh, they thought they were going to get Contamination locked. Oh, they should have... Oh, uh, mm, that's fine. It's like some argument for proactively coffin purging, but my opponent had 13 life. Not too mad about that. Dust Bowl. They can dust my Mistress Factory. And then they can, um, and then they'll trade their Dust Bowl for the Wasteland. Just really good because I'll be left on two lands. Don't have a choice. Paris should have said green and white creatures. Be a lot more pre modern playable if it did. They take a redundant copy of Contamination. They should know that um, if I want the Contamination to hit, it's going to hit. So they might just be responding to the fact that they lost last game to Contamination, but I, and also the fact that these cards are horrible. <laughs> like, and discarding the Coffin Purge is bad, so maybe Contamination is like sort of the only good target. Well, I'm drawing a lot of them. Making an Assembly Worker. It's awkward, but it's the only play. Don't ever tap land for anything. Four mana for another scrying. Just a decree. No better time to uh, protect my Mistress Factory than now. They get a 1-1. One, one. Two, de two decrees down. Pretty relevant. Card is one of the good things against me. I think I would have dusted me first. Signifying that they want to race, huh? Now they can finally play a face down angel because they can. They have Diabolic Edict and Innocent Blood covered. Okay, what do we do? Port. Oh, we're on blocking duty now, huh? Yeah, that's a problem. I do not know how I want to deal with this angel. I think I now have to play as defensively as possible. Um, I don't really want to go try to play for top deck, um, top deck innocent blood to just one for one this board. And I don't want to run Contamination. So I could have gone for the Contamination, Animate Mistress Factory, play Nether Spirit line, but um, that's not good either because then I would have nothing against um, creatures on the board. You never want to commit the combo if your opponent has creatures on the board. But yeah, this clock is going to get me until I can deal. I'm going to hold the Coffin Purge. I still want to draw a Zombie Infestation. A second Nether Spirit. Yeah. Not sure about that, especially because I have Disenchant mana up. Just gonna pass. Just thinking about casting another Spirit. Just really need Cabal Therapy soon. Need Snuff Out. Need Engineered Plague. I would attack for six, use my removal spell opponent. 
but their removal spell could be a plowshares. Yeah. This might be the time. Give me something good. Another nether spirit. That's not good. Really needed the zombie infestation. See if I can try to gain two life. Would be relevant to gain two life. Don't know. Lose to a decree, of course. Yes, so they can get for, for five. I'll go in five and then snuff out. Saves me. Tutor. Seal cleansing. Maybe I should have dystopia in case they have like a few soldier tokens. Dystopia might be better than innocent blood. Okay. Yeah. We learned something. Because at least on this board, dystopia gets gets there. I mean, they are holding lots of disenchant effects, but we do have dress cabal therapy, so. Uh, I'm not dead yet, right? We land. play another spirit. Oh, I'm not holding up Coffin Purge right now. Enlightened Tutor in this deck. I don't know. Humility is good, I guess. Maybe. Not sure. Be interested to know whether Tutor targets. It makes um, Circle of Protection a lot better. You can find your Circle of Protection warmth. Pretty reasonable. Man, Exalted Angel. Give me the answer, please. Um, but yeah, I, I, I made a couple mistakes. Um, there should be no dragon. The dragon's going to be my next problem. Uh, that's it. Okay, so dystopia is better than innocent blood. Costs more mana, right? But otherwise can deal with that board, whereas innocent blood couldn't. Double black is kind of annoying, but those creatures never come down early. Give it a shot. We did not see any Phyrexian Furnace. Okay. That's what dreams are made of. Get a tainted pact into my um, interaction, I guess. Port. Okay. It's, it's tainted pact first. Infestation. I'm not going to make a 2-2 with infestation until I have stuff to pitch to it. So let's try it that. I think nether spirit or contamination. Oh, dress. Dress is pretty good. Especially if the next card I'm going to get is... Um, like Nether Spirit Contamination. Fine. Okay. So we're going to Duress and then play Contamination. Play Zombie Infestation. Tainted Pact, a good thing into our hand. Okay, so none of these cards are, I think, cards that matter. Do I want to port away a face down angel? I think I'm pretty interested in that. Skeletal scrying, Vindicate. Vindicate's not going to matter because I can get everything out. Yeah, I'll probably use the time walk here. I think skeletal scrying is super relevant for me to um, have blocked. Uh, yeah. I mean, if they do jam angel, I can taint it packed into the spirit and then, well, no, I want to actually play these two cards at the same turn. Um... They have no black. Uh, I want to be able to play these two cards in the same turn for the win. Oh, dystopia prematurely. Okay. Okay. So now what do we do? We still tap them off black because I can't vindicate. And then maybe I can just go for the win. It's a little bit of a risky line, but I think I take it. Um, I want to still be playing pretty aggressively in this phase of the game because once they have the angel on board, the, the game's going to change and I'm going to be forced into spots that I'm not comfortable with. So actually I shouldn't this infestation Oop, reflecting pool means they can vindicate the infestation. Okay. Yeah. You got me on that. Let's just draw well. Oh, so now we can dress away the plowshares. Is that even good? Dressed, dress, port and packed in the same turn. I think that's fine. The plowshares really doesn't matter. Plowshares really doesn't matter that much. Oh, I can wasteland though. So why don't I wasteland? Yeah, I can always dress away the plowshares, protect contamination. So why don't I just port and pack this turn? Based on creature. Okay, coffin purge. No thanks. Reanimate. Yeah. Dress away sword splash airs. Decree of justice, second exalted angel. Man, my dystopia affects me too. Awkward. Well, I don't have an answer for angel besides dystopia. It's like super awkward. Everything's awkward. So why don't I reanimate a uh, exalted angel after 
Oh, but then they can decree under, oh, I should have taken decree because what's going to happen is I'm going to tap a swamp. They're going to play a plane. So they're going to flip. Then I have dystopia. They decree for two. And then the, the, the decree for two gets under dystopia. So I'm not going to get the angel right away. So I, I, I just messed that up. So we just got to take eternal dragon. Man, I wanted to take angel. I, I punted again. I should have thought about a line to take angel because I could have just taken decree. If I take angel, they plow the angel though. Is it really that good? That's okay. I mean, at least I have um, battlefields here. So it's not the end of the world. Mistress factory. Okay. Thinking about decreeing for one. Oh, just going for the flip. Okay. Decree. Just two tokens. Pick up dragon. They can't pick up dragon. Scrying for four. Scrying for four is really good. So what if I just played contamination into like something good? Oh, they're scrying until they get to the plowshares. That's intense. But if I draw another spirit, then I can lock them out. Dust Bowl, annoying. Tormont's Crypt, similarly annoying. So now it's no longer a thing. Yeah, I uh, don't feel good. Don't feel good, Mr. Stark. So they still have the decree. Now I have all these contaminations, so I just need zombie infestation so I can not be drawing contamination. Yeah, it's bad shape. Can't can't really do anything from here. I've pretty much lost. Oh, still better to tap down black. Eventually my opponent just finds plowshares and whatever. This decree blocks my dystopia, so I need to find a um a cabal therapy soon based on Angel. Get some cobalt therapy. We did not. Just hang out for longer. Yeah, uh, I need my own skeletal scrying very fast. Maybe I wasn't supposed to taint a pack for um, reanimate. Maybe it would have been stronger to have a spirit. Oh man, I'm going to lose the dystopia. Indicate. There's really nothing I can draw now. Oh, oops. Whatever. Oh, okay. That, the good guide me. Got to do something. Nope. Uh, contamination, why are you like this? All right. Uh, let's see if I can turn my luck around from this 1-3 start. Um, you know, obviously some punting going on, but um, we try our best. I don't think I, I don't think I could have done anything in that black-white control matchup. Feels like Null Rod just would have been too bad. Swamp Goat. Infestation time is about to happen. Basic Mountain. Infestation time is going to feel pretty necessary to stay on this battlefield. It's going to be port time as well. So hopefully we can... Uh, hopefully it's goblins. We're good against goblins. It is goblins. Okay. Hopefully we don't um, somehow find a way to lose this. I think my life total is going to matter enough to hang on to this Bloodstained Mire and not cast it. Port Double port here is going to be quite good against goblins here. And then if we ever get the combo, it's also over. Could be mono red goblins. Do we have any believers? Goblin Lackey is not getting in. Let's see. Wasteland? Not relevant right now. Keep porting. Wonder what the best thing to have happen here besides drawing. Ooh, baby. Let's go. Opponent is a man of taste. Okay. Opponent thinking about an attack, maybe? No attack, like maybe a matron at the end of combat, which uh, they can't cast at that phase. Okay, got a matron. Matron's pretty good. Get that lackey, I don't know. Get the gem palm, I think. It's the next best thing, because I'm going to keep locking their mana out. Ringleader, not going to cast it. You are not going to have ringleader mana for a while, my friend. So what's kind of awkward is that I can't like make two I mean, I can make two zombies, obviously, but if I draw another spirit, I won't be able to execute the combo like at like perfect timing. I'm gonna have to do the double port trick, force them to use their mana. Oh, cycling incinerator here is not good. They want to do that while I have a creature in play. Like taking out a zombie with incinerator could be how they get some damage in here. So I don't like really want to let the pile driver hit me, but of course I have to block the lackey. So, so I kind of want to pitch four cards. Opponent is gonna go ahead and relax anyways. Pluto Delta. I think we're sticking with the infestation fodder plan. 
I don't really want to get up to triple port mana because it's just using too many, putting too many lands into play when I can just put two twos into play. Opponent does nothing for another turn. We have him locked under port. We're just waiting for, waiting for another spirit like we do. I wonder if like I'm supposed to deal with Tormod's Crypt out of goblins um, in the post board because I really don't want to run Null Rod against goblins. Just kind of seems bad. Our opponent does appear to be Mono Red. Tinker. That's not a goblin that matters. Okay. Unfortunate to expose the zombie to future incinerator. But it is what it is. Again, I don't really want to play out lands because I think half a zombie token is better. Our opponent eventually could get to ringleader mana. We also need sickening dreams to make an appearance eventually. Need contagion to make an appearance. Need Engineer Plague to make an appearance. Opponent with a Mog Fanatic. <laughs> After much deliberation. Eventually, I could get like overwhelmed. I do need like Sickening Dreams. Smother is not bad. Ugh. I want to hold mana up for Smother, but I do want to keep porting. That's awkward. Maybe I'll play a land next time I have eight cards. I mean, I have to keep porting to keep Ringleader from coming down. I mean, I've got two tokens I'm pretty happy to make. This Ringleader doesn't matter too much if I'm just like mana denying them, but I do need to draw something. They could, they, they could pop off on me. The ports are kind of the only thing that are stopping them. I only have two more 2-2s to add to the board out of this hand. Opponent, still nothing. And Duress, that'll be great for pitching to Zombie Infestation. Play the port here. So I think saving Smother for Warchief is the play. Like Warchief opens up my opponent's ability to do things. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Can we draw something relevant, please? Fam. No. Just force them to um, spend all their mana the turn that they Warchief and then smother it on my turn. It's kind of where we're at. So Goblins is supposed to be a good matchup, but I do need to like draw like things. I drew one of the important cards right and then I've drawn like no other important card. <laughs> Oof. Okay. Contagion. Hard cast. Hard cast or soft cast? Decide later cast. Oh my god. I'm just clicking forever, man. So much clicking. The clicking never ends. Port is just like the most miserable card that was ever printed. Goblin King. Cool. This is gonna be a good um, contagion. Serve, 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 serve. Gobbling up some goblins. Gobbling up the goblins. Gobbling up goblins. Gobbling up goblins. How many goblins do I want to gobble? Do I want to gobble the maximum? Who knows? So contagion let me block twice properly, but um, there was like basically thinking I could contagion and then just smother the king, but I'm just going to contagion the king. They can mog fanatic. So it's not, they can take down an extra cop, uh, zombie token, but their board goes back to like nothing. So, and the threat of pile driver is no longer there. I'm just going to go back to my life triple porting. All right. Cleaned up the board a little. Could have used some sickening dreams at any point in this game. Yeah. Look at this board. I can almost attack this turn, but attacking just doesn't matter. Therapy for ringleader. Give me a break. What a joke. I think I guess I get therapy for War Chief. I can't get punished by just three mana. Get therapy for nothing. Just use it. We're so so far into this game. War Chief, yeah. Attack. Smother therapy for ringleader. Ringleader. Okay. We got a few. Smother this war chief. Oh, we got three. Paul Driver Lackey War Chief. So I could flashback therapy, name War Chief, and then Innocent Blood in the future. Probably don't need to do that. I do want War Chief to not be in their hand though, because it's a little bit good. Okay, fine. Flashback therapy. I guess I should have therapied War Chief and then gone after uh, whatever I would have. Oh, yeah, I could have therapied War Chief last turn. Because I knew it was like a thing. I, I like, I don't know. Anybody who's watching this online, just remind me if I had a, like a way, a time, a window that I could have therapied, gotten two war chiefs and three ringleaders during like this phase of the game. 
play pile driver, play lackey. Meanwhile, I do nothing. Yeah, awkward. I think that I could lose this game pretty easily at some point. Tapping all off, stupid ringleader mana, stupid relevant. If opponent just has incinerator, they're in really reasonable shape. The Siege Gang is obviously good. Then I force to have Sickening Dreams. Uh, Ringleader is also good. I have a main deck engineered plague. I'm just going to lose, I think. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, wait, Sp Prospector means that they can um, they can make red mana under uh, contamination. Ringleader? Matron? Why would you just let me eat a matron for free? Another spirit? Thank you. Thank you, deck. Needed that. I don't know, should I play Contamination now? Like I have blocks. They have Prospect, like Contamination stops them from playing, casting the Prospector that's in their hand. So I have this one blocker, but then I only have a blocker every two turns. Kinda need to wait till, kinda need to wait, I think, till I have a little bit more removal. On the other hand, Two blockers this turn. They simply don't attack next turn. I sacrifice another spirit. Another draw card. Another turn cycle. I think I'll slow them down enough with this contamination. Because they, they can't play any more goblins. So, oh, give me the free block. Do it. Okay. Another laborious game one win. Takes a lot of time. If you like playing magic for a long period of time, I recommend mono black contamination. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna block here with another spirit and then I'm gonna chill because I actually have to have something to block Goblin Lackey for the rest of the game. I don't have another creature. Yeah, okay. Like, oh yeah. Uh, do this thing. Yield, yes. Yield. Sack. Hang out, draw a card, pass the turn. Oh, just in time. Take two. Somebody give me a mistress factory. I can block this turn because next turn I'll have a uh, token to block. Opponent, please just pack it in. We have so much life to live. There we go. Check their deck list really quick. Okay, so here's the problem. Um, they are definitely have the potential to play a graveyard disruption artifact, but it does feel like um, my deck does not um, interact well with graveyard disruption artifacts because I still have to do the lock to win the game. I'm pretty sure. Um, so. Um, I assume Alvaro would uh, have like kind of a specific line here uh, with his experience in the matchup, but my expectation is that I'm going to try to assemble the combo and do whatever I can to um, make that a thing that happens for me. Is there a good goblin to reanimate? Siege Gang? I think I'd say so. Stupid Null Rod. Stupid Null Rod. This hand does not be goblin lackey, but I'm not going to mulligan to do that. Just got to do what you can. Stupid Smother. Stupid Null Rod. Dreams one time. Otherwise, this port is just going to rock me. Matron. Matron rocks me. Engineered Plague. At some point, please. Ringleader. They need the they need the stuff. But port is insane here. Look how much better port is than Wasteland right here in this spot. Zombie infestation. Finally. Finally, some good news. I get the Ringleader, but I finally have something going on. My null rods are going to get put to good use or I can just have dreams maybe. Nice opponent is just playing a very civilized list if you ask me. Yeah, Paul Driver Fanatic. Oh, doesn't holds back the Fanatic? Interesting. Tainted Pact. Doesn't feel relevant. Might just pitch Contamination and try to have Skeletal Scrying get me back in this game. So pitch these four cards. Team comes in. Yep. I think that's what's happening. Yeah, that's just definitely what's happening, actually. Pyrokinesis. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. <sighs> yep. Engineer Plague one time, please. Zombie Infestation is not doing the thing that I would... Oh, okay. Engineer Plague one time, please. Or we lose. 
Oh yeah, I can't even I can't even do it because of port. Okay, that's not enough. Oh boy, pyrokinesis. Boo. Boo worms. Edict effects are so bad against goblins. Discard effects are so bad against goblins. Snow rod is so bad against goblins. I didn't draw contagion, I guess. Would have helped to draw contagion. Would help to draw engineer plague. There are cards that I want. Maybe I mulligan towards them. Maybe I'd have to mulligan hands that contain no black sources. Okay, at least we keep this. Tainted Pact. We have Scrying, we have Innocent Blood. Pyrokinesis breaks up a uh, Contamination Lock. Uh-oh. I did not think about that at all. Um, that was mentioned on the podcast, so that one's on me. So maybe I shouldn't have Null Rods. Ooh, two Nether Spirits. Like the sound of that. Get a bait the first crypt activation. Or Goblin Pile Driver. Um, swamp. Smother. I want to bait them into playing more uh, goblins, huh? Let's see if I can catch a uh, Goblin Warchief next turn. Oh, but they have the ability to port me. Okay, I'll take the two for two. Two for three. Take quite a bit of damage here. Makes me want to pitch my skeletal scrying. Maybe I should have just smothered the Morchi if I take five and then two more. So I take seven down to 12. I'll have the battlefield back after this. Wish this was an instant port, port your port. Kind of like that smother, but got to give it up when you got to give it up. Let's try to draw some contagion. Lackey, Lackey port me. I'm going to draw two cards if I get ported. I need to... I kind of want to draw three cards. Two cards is just so much less than three. But I do nothing if nothing happens. Oh, I can port your port next turn. Seems good. I also want to draw like Contagion. Port, port your port. Okay. Slacky's pretty scary now because they can just um, play a removal spell, get the Lackey in. Things start getting a little scary. Matron. Let's draw um, Engineer Plague, please. War Chief. War Chief is, of course, the strongest goblin from this position. Is it better than Ringleader? Do I port them off War Chief at all? Mistress Factory. Pretty good. Perfect, uh, perfect land. Hopefully, my skeletal scrying for four finds what it needs. But yeah, if they go like War Chief, Pyrokinesis, then I mean, I'm in trouble. Go War Chief Paul Driver. It's not even that good for me. Okay, this is good. Oh, spend only. Oh, for a second, I was like, spend only Black Man on X. It was like a soul burn or drain life. Can you imagine? Contagion, contamination, infestation. Cool. These are relevant. Contamination, infestation, same turn. I think we got to do it. We got to do it from this spot. Yeah. Doesn't get better than this, I think. Infestation is like kind of a really weird hedge though, but I've got two mistress factories. I've got the ports. I just need to like not die this turn, not get pyrocade on upkeep in a weird spot, but I've got so much protection against the pyrokinesis. So, oh, they threw up the GGs, but yeah, I can just contagion here and then they only have a war chief. I mean, they threw the GGs, so I'll throw the GGs back. Skeletal scrying for four. Okay, a win's a win. All right, contamination. Let's get this 3-3, which would technically be like a 4-2 because of the Grotog match that we punted. It was punting every, everything. Boom. Oh my God, we did it. We did it, Joe. We did it, Joe. We did it, th the three-way parlay. Oh my God, I've never been so happy. I, we just needed the duress. Oh my God. Please opponent, don't do anything for three turns. Just don't do anything. Don't do it. Don't do it. No, don't play mountain. Don't play goblin like. Okay. We did it. This is actually like the dream for us. We can't, we actually can't lose to this. Like we actually, we actually can't lose to this. Oh my God. Oh. This is what this is what euphoria feels like. It took it took 
a lot of games. Took a lot of games for it to come together, but we got there. I will block. I will block and you will not cast a spell for the rest of your game. Don't play more. Okay, that's fine. You won't be able to activate that. I mean, what's cool is that I'm uh, hedged to um, uh, play around removal. They would need like double fire blast or whatever. Um, because if they try to kill the uh, nether spirit, I will uh, have uh, backup uh, zombie infestation activation. So I need the zombie infestation because this lock on its own just wouldn't wouldn't have done it. So we beat Fire Blast. Curse Scroll is going to be a lot of work for them. They have to hit the one in one in a thousand. They're like understanding what the card does now. I guess I shouldn't have pitched the port. There's like some worlds in which I need the port, but hard to say. And I can, uh, opponent being a good sport about it. Okay, what do we do now? Um, burn. There is nothing of my opponents that I want to reanimate. And reanimating Nether Spirit seems pretty bad use of three damage. Contagion's still good. Being fast is still good. We want the no rods because they could have crypt. They could have um, curse scroll obviously is the way out. Jurassic Ball therapy is good. Sickening Dreams is okay. Sickening Dreams for one could, could get some decent card advantage. Question is like how decent the card advantage is. Like Engineer Plague. It's probably worse than Dreams in that scenario, but you kind of want it. Engineer Plague naming Elemental. It's like, do we have enough coverage? Dreams is damaged to me, so I'm just gonna just gonna go ahead and not play it. Uh, maybe Skeletal Scrying isn't great. Um, if I take out the Skeletal Scrying, I will never be able to clean up my own graveyard for if I get two Nether Spirits in there. So the question is, does that matter? Is like they're how would my opponent be able to do that if I never expose duplicate nether spirits to graveyard hate is the question. Maybe just play one one scrying, extra E-plague. Now I, I like having something that's low um, curve. So dreams is probably actually fine because on my turn two, there's a lot of worlds in which my opponent has two one drops in play. Plus it's an outlet for nether spirit. It's fine. It's not pretty, but it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be pretty reasonable against 12 one drop creatures. Nice, nice. A Little bit of nothing. Okay. Um, bottom this polluted delta. And hope my opponent is, but we have options, right? If my opponent plays a creature, we kill it. If my opponent plays not a creature, we'll innocent blood. Okay. Redundant. Um, Geyerson is not my favorite, but Let's go ahead and rip off the dress. Maybe I should trim dress. It's a little awkward to um, have a bunch of dress. Well, Sulfuric Vortex is one way to defeat um, Contamination Lock. And also, like, I actually have no answers in my deck to Sulfuric Vortex. Wow. Just another example of Sulfuric Vortex just being the best there ever was. Opponent goes for the end step incinerate. Oh, what's that? Can tap them off ball lightning for a turn. These innocent bloods looking a little hilariously bad, but we're actually we're actually the beat down once this nether spirit comes into play. Oh, should I take a turn to engineered plague naming elemental? That is a very hard question because all the other creatures are summoning sick. Elemental is the only thing I'm worried about. My opponent's only drawn two cards that I don't know about. Yeah, I, I can take a turn off for this. I'm pretty sure. Opponent getting towards the range where Curse Scroll is really good. Yeah, I can't beat this card, right? That, that was the one punish for just casting Nether Spirit. So now I have to draw Zombie Infestation and race as quickly as possible. But Contamination Lock is just horrible. It just like cuts me off um, building a board. And uh, actually what my opponent could even do is just like play a burn spell every upkeep after, you know, whatever. Just like pretty awkward. And then obviously they can just double burn Nether Spirit now. From, from this spot, just have to be in that world, I think. Price of progress could be a problem. Do I need to establish contamination? Like, the opponent drawing two Sulfuric Vortex at least indicates it's likely to have a lot of them. God, these Innocent Bloods are not good. 
Is there anything I contained it packed for that's powerful? I contained it packed into sickening dreams to force the draw in some worlds. I think porting doesn't do anything. Maybe my opponents just completely flood out and we just completely stole this one. I guess I'll tainted packed into an additional mistress factory. My opponent goes down to three, so mistress factory helps me win the game. I'll go ahead and play out the port. Not a lot of reasons not to um, play it out from here. Hardcast fire blast. Yeah. I'm down to five, three effective. My opponent just needs to not draw seven lands. I mean, extremely unlucky for them. Oh, the barbarian ring. That puts me down to one. And then, yeah, I was tracking wrong. I missed one of the uh, land, land drops. Nothing I can do about that, baby. Uh, all right, maybe I actually do play reanimates because I'm just gonna like reanimate their ball lightning to like race them in some worlds. It's the only, it's the only target though. Uh, skeletal scrying is no good. How do I beat stupid um, sulfuric vortex? I'm a black deck. I don't have any. Rem I don't have any enchantment removal. Oh man, what have I done? I made everybody's red decks better. Tough life. Okay, so engineered plague naming elemental was just like. Very necessary. Innocent Blood ended up being horrible, but that's just, I don't know, that's kind of incidental. I'm on the play now, so things are slightly different. Like, on the play, Singing Dreams is worse because, like, I'm going to hold it and then wait to play it on turn three. Reanimating Ball Lightning seems like it's not going to happen. Smother is better. Yeah, Smother seems better. It's so unlikely for Reanimate Ball Lightning to be a thing. None of these other cards help me stop Sulfuric Vortex. Engineered Plague is better than Dreams now because after they play two one drops, I can Plague. Hopefully those one drops have the same name. All right, let's just try to... Um... Man, I lost that game. My opponent drew seven lands. One of them was a Barbarian Ring. That doesn't bode well for me. All right, we're 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 halfway there. This is like the best hand I can hope for. These are some good hands. I, I haven't like had Fast Nether Spirit any other match or game, I think. Dress, perfect timing. I have to cast that Dress next turn underneath uh, potential Sulfuric Vortex, of course. Trading three cards for, um, I was hoping for double curse scroll, but alas. So trading three cards for my, or two cards for my first zombie is, I guess it's fine. We have a perfect curve. We're gonna make a two, two every other turn until we draw contamination. Opponent willing to give me a little bit of value here. Don't know what I would have done. Yeah, just not really sure what I would have done. This ball lightning hit is a concern. Another nether spirit. That doesn't work for me. Uh, what's weird is like I sort of can't discard it to zombie infestation any either. Winter orb. Winter orb does not matter. Winter orb is worse with their own curse scroll. Like I don't even need to um I don't even need to play Null Rod if they play Winter Orb. I mean, I'm definitely taking the Incinerate and there's no better time to cast this Null Rod to use this mana since I'm not porting them off anything and I'm not really using port for the rest of the game. So at least I have 20 life and we're like kind of stalemated. Like Winter Orb does stop my, um, stop my Mistress Factories, obviously. So these Mog Fanatics are dead. Cool. Perfect draw. Get some aggression in. Not really sure if I want to hedge this second Nether Spirit, but now I actually have interesting options. If my opponent drew a one mana burn spell, they could prevent this um, Nether Spirit from coming through. I also need to question whether or not I want ball lightning insurance, but it's really hard to give up the tempo here, I think. If they have any graveyard removal, they can't use it because of null rod. So I guess I should just stay the stay the course risking a second other spirit in play would be good for my clock but um would be bad for potentially just being completely thrown off i really do wish i could have another zombie though but that's actually the main thing so i guess i want skeletal scrying i don't know still seems kind of bad grim grim is going to die one day one day not soon but one day Winter Orb is actually doing work for me, I think. Um, but I am going to maybe leave up port for one turn. Just because they can use their mana on their upkeep so efficiently, it's just kind of like seems a little bit bad to port. Like I'm gonna wait till I have all my unla un lands untapped and then I'm gonna port and then maybe I can get some consecutive ports in. But what I really wanna do is just get more zombies 
Okay, with my opponent tapping that, uh, attacking with that Grim Lava Mancer, I actually think I should port here so they can't add another creature to the board for now. Yeah, just a bolt. I mean, bolt is good. Tainted Pact. So the question is how much I value this uh, Grim Lava Mancer. I think I value it quite high because um, it can just kill all the zombie tokens I make. It's unfortunate they have the bolt, but they did have the bolt, which means my aggressive um, Nether Spirit play was at least somewhat rewarded. One damage. I don't think we're going to trade two cards to protect against one damage. Second Nether Spirit. Keep this mountain tapped. Hopefully, hopefully they can't use it. And then we're actually thinking about trying to get the second Nether Spirit onto the battlefield. Um, or if my opponent wants to run into um, a zombie token, I'm going to be pretty open to that. So I could get frisky here. I could discard the um, discard, but I think it's probably better this way. Maybe I should Contagion a while ago, save myself about three life. Hopefully my opponent just like jams the ball lightning next turn. Hopefully my opponent doesn't have double fire blast in, in my future. I'm just like dead to mountain double fire blast action. Yeah, I don't think I should have went for it though. I would have just lost both Nether Spirits and they would have been locked in the graveyard forever. To any one, one mana burn spell. Contemplating chilling. Okay, so now will be the time to Contagion. Do I want to Contagion? And then all, like hold the Contagion as ball lightning insurance. Really want my two four fours to survive. Really don't want to get hit by ball lightning. I could always just not make a zombie. I think making a zombie is like correct though. I guess I'm porting next turn. This puts me into fire blast range. So maybe I should have just contagion the Grim Lava Mancer a long time ago. Learned a lot, learned a lot, but I think double fire blast is in our future. Luckily, ball lightning is not in our future. Port you. Face. Bolt face? Bolt face plus like another thing face and then fire blast me? Like, why can't I just draw a duress for this turn? Oh, this is so close. This is so unf... Uh, I should have killed the Grim Lava Mancer on that attack. I had to keep my Nether Spirit alive. Why is this deck so hard to play, man? It's just... It's only one color. I, I I think I think I had a line. I like maybe I should spend twice as much time thinking. I'm like actually technically playing faster than my opponents. It's like so hard to talk and play at the same time. If you one damage burn spell fire blast me, I'm gonna be so pissed. I guess I opened myself up to lethal price of progress. Actually, I'm I'm safe from that. Come on, let's just can I just have it, please? Okay. So it's not a fire blast because if they have one damage burn spell fire blast, that's like lethal. Mistress Factory, love love that actually. Oh man. So they're forced to like bolt something. Bolt zombie token or whatever. Mistress Factory was a good draw. I should have opened myself up to the possibility of drawing duress, I guess, but I don't think that would have been good. Fire blast. They slow rolled me. Come on. <laughs> Do they really slow roll me? I'm a, I'm a mortal black deck. There's I have no tricks. <laughs> no more fire in my hand. Okay, a win's a win. That's how I feel. It's like when I win, it's like a win's a win. And when I lose, I actually punted, right? Oh my God, we got there. I think we could have played that game slightly more efficiently. But uh, GGZ Sep and I mean, beating burn is, is big game. And that null rod actually went super hard there. Um, we had the nuts game one though. So, um, got to, um, you know, got to credit the nuts in game one. I think game one would have been maybe a lot harder in in some worlds. So, um, yeah, contamination, pretty, pretty intense. Uh, lots of close ones. Um, close one against the, um, blue white, uh, blue white landstill deck um close one against grotog i forget the third match i lost i'll have to check that out all right that is a wrap on contamination um by far the most difficult deck that i have uh i mean like I, the deck itself i mean maybe it's difficulty is similar to like grotog or replenish or whatever but like you know for me i just like have none of the muscle memory on this deck so um, the lines are very unique. Um, I, I generally don't 
like like playing love playing like these sort of like low resource decks like um you know the value proposition on zombie infestation is like turn every other like turn two cards into a two two zombie is like i don't know crazy but um i guess this this deck you, you got to see it a lot it creates a lot of dead cards and then it converts those dead cards with um zombie infestation pitch cards um and uh i guess i don't know some sickening dreams discard outlet um the uh sideboard felt pretty fine um i think i would have preferred maybe like maybe some of these like flexi these flexi cards i would play differently um we also like kind of beat the mirror so that doesn't really count towards data we beat goblins but like the goblins match was like close even it's like this deck's supposed to stomp on goblins there's so much removal and it's just like it still ended up being like not a runaway victory um you have so little agency over your draws definitely makes me want to play um more tainted pack or more sylvan scrying like draws where we had like this infestation with nether spirit was good um but like you know just like okay well maybe we got the crazy discard start and then we were just kind of like slow down not getting anything good off the top um you get a uh, good utility out of your mana base though so um you know that part is pretty cool um uh, didn't have to mulligan too much but I, I mean i wish i could mulligan more it's like I, some hands i wanted to mulligan because they were just like super average they did didn't have a lot of interaction or they'd be bad if the interaction was bad, but it's like mulling to six cards when you have so many pitch cards and so much card disadvantage in the deck is doesn't feel good. Maybe you're, you're supposed to just do it. Um, you're supposed to identify in the matchup that you just like need a mulligan until you have another spirit maybe. Um, so some things to learn about that. Um, I could have been more aggressive with tainted pact. Um, I think one thing that I'm not used to doing with Tainted Pact because I'm so allergic to just Tainted Pact for nothing is to just cast Tainted Pact and have like one or two different cards in mind that you just like really need in that moment and just like use it as like a suicidal demonic consultation, right? Just like I need Nether Spirit, I need it now and I'm not going to settle for like, you know, one time I was like, oh, I'll just draw a Wasteland or something. And so it's like Wasteland, you know, might not have been the best card, like maybe um, instead of just cutting my losses, I should have gambled a little harder on tainted pack. So definitely stuff to consider. Um, but, uh, yeah, really, you know, I, I, I was, I was surprised at how good this deck was. Um, like, obviously I had trouble with it. Obviously it was like, you know, a lot of like, just like, it was like suffering, like playing it was like a, a difficult experience, but, um, you know, if you just like look at the score three, three with a couple punts, a couple like minor efficiencies, like things that it, like, oh, it's my first time playing the deck. If I, if I played it a few more times, there's definitely a world in which this kid, this could have been a four, two or a five, one run in which pace, you know, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't scoff at it. Like, you know, we beat goblins, we beat burn. Like those are two real decks, um, that, you know, um, like being good against are, are good. Um, the grow talk matchup is, you know, supposed to be a difficult matchup. And if I just like remember to pump my mistress factory, I just like would have won. Right. I would have won that match. Um, I lost to like, I lost on a one card margin against the opposing mistress factory deck. So like, it is kind of funny that that deck has mistress factory and it has exalted angel face down, which are two cards that you can cast or, or um, operate under contamination. So um, you know, maybe I look back and I used a wasteland too, too much, or I, I didn't hold up a port or something. Maybe I pitched a port to zombie infestation, something random like that. Um, uh, you know, yeah. So like if I just navigate better, honestly, this looks just as good as any other deck that I played. And it's the first time, you know, it's the first time I played it and, and we didn't play against too many of those sort of like meme decks where it's just kind of like, oh, well this doesn't count as data. I mean, I guess the mirror match in a sense is kind of a meme deck and obviously that opponent really struggling with that deck, um, with their own six record, but, um, definitely, you know, uh, I think black is a very weak color in pre-modern, but if you just embrace that black is weak color and you play, you know, these, these cards that kind of like come to like, <laughs> Like, I don't know, it, it just it just tickles me that the strongest thing uh, black can do is uh, discard 
it's black cards to just like make zombies and like convert, you know, um, like if I look at this deck and I'm just like, what is this deck really good at? It's like, well, this deck is really good at turning all of its cards into like half a zombie or a minus two minus one token. Um, so, um, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's funny, but you know, dressing cabal therapy, getting in there. Um, like there were things we were scared. Of. Like, I think, another thing that I noticed was that you, you would, you could point out certain cards. You're like, Oh, this deck's not good against Mox diamond. It's not good against, um, curse scroll or whatever. Um, but there were some games against Grotog where, uh, like I was like going to duress away a Mox diamond and my opponent foiled the duress. So that's like super great value. And, uh, even in some board positions, like I can con contamination lock them with the zombie infestation in play and maybe they have the Mox diamond, but it's only making one colored source per turn. And, um, the Grotog deck, uh, you know, it can't cast, uh, you know, it can't cast meddling mage, you know, with, with contamination play unless it has two mox diamonds. Um, and it can't like, it's only going to cast like one cantrip. So, uh, you know, there's some worlds in which even through mox diamond, you can, you can get a game in, get, get a good game going. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I think, I want to try a splash. You know, honestly, this is not my style. So I want to try a splash next. I think this deck, you know, zombie infestation, not really feeling it. Like I'd rather just play call the herd. Like you really want to be able to get onto the battlefield. Um, or maybe you play zombie, zombie infestation and call the herd, right? Cause you really want to get into the bat battlefield. You really want cards that get you value out of your graveyard. If you're going to play zombie infestation and they can't be creatures, right? So call the herd kind of ticks all those boxes. Um, uh, Sylvan Scrying is super cool, but you know, maybe uh, instead of Tainted Pact, we just play Cremate. We just have the angle to cremate our own uh, duplicate and other spirits, um, but then just like, get a little cantripping in there. Um, but uh, you know, Tainted Pact was impressive. I, I, I hit some good Tainted Packs. I never, um, I never uh, busted on Tainted Pact, so uh, you know, not the worst. And plus, we get to play a sick mana base with um, with Tainted Pact. So uh, you know, learned a lot. Played. Uh, I, you know, um, I'm not a believer yet, but, uh, this was, this was going in a, in a good direction. This was like a more like this is overperformed my expectations. And, um, uh, you know, and I think it's, it's going to be a difficult deck for a new player, new, like people picking up for the first time to pick up and, and, uh, run with, but, I think if you put a lot of time in this deck, like Alvaro has, uh, you will be rewarded. And, um, um, as you know, there's not, it's not every week that you get a, a new concept, um, like a new shell that, uh, kind of has, uh, this kind of performance in pre-modern. So, uh, you know, good work Alvaro and, um, uh, you know, watch out for, watch out for maybe the comeback of Mono Black. Um, check out the links in the description. See you later.